Hey guys, my name is Vishal and today we're talking about the iPhone 13 Apple event. In this video, I want to summarize what we learned in the event and talk about some of the new tech that Apple announced in this event. Now, I won't be going into too much detail about each of the products because I am going to be making uh, smaller videos covering each of those products because there is quite a bit of detail, but we will go over the key characteristics and some of the key features of every one of those products. Now in this event, Apple focused on the iPad, Apple Watch, and iPhones. They did not talk about the Mac lineup, which is something that we're going to be looking forward to in the upcoming weeks and months here. So what did we get in this Apple event? Well, we got five new product releases. We got the release date and pricing for some of these products. We got the uh, we got an introduction to the advancements in technology and the new technology that Apple uh, has put into these devices, as well as upgrades from last year. Uh, we also got uh, uh, per peripherals like MagSafe uh, and some others for some of the other products. And we got some new colors for the iPhones and the iPads uh, that you can now choose from uh, when you guys go ahead and purchase that. Alright, now let's get into the products themselves. First up, we have the ninth generation of iPad. Now, overall, there wasn't a huge change from the 8th generation of iPad. It, this generation still has uh, most of the same features like the home button, it has the bezels on the top and bottom, it has the rounded edges just like the 8th generation. There has been an improvement to the chipset. The 9th generation of iPad now uses an A13 Bionic chip. It also includes a 12 megapixel front facing camera that now allows you to use center stage which was a feature previously uh, only usable on iPad Pro. The last thing about the 9th generation of iPad is that it will start at $399 for the 64GB model which is now the base model as compared to the 32GB base model uh, that was available on the 8th generation. Now these are going to be at comparable price points so it's something that you guys should definitely consider when you're purchasing an iPad. Next up we have the iPad mini. Now this is one of the products that got a totally new refresh design uh, as compared to the previous version of the iPad mini. The iPad mini now features the same design as the iPad Air from last year, uh, including the flat edge design, the fingerprint sensor on the home button which has now moved to the top, uh, as well as a USB-C connector at the bottom. The iPad mini now comes with the all new A15 Bionic chipset, which means better performance than even the iPad Air from last year, which uses the A14 Bionic chipset. The iPad mini also includes a 12 megapixel ultra wide front camera again with center stage and also a 12 megapixel wide rear camera. It includes the 8.3 inch liquid retina display that stretches from edge to edge. Yes, there's still a bezel, but it is now, like I said, more towards the iPad Air design. Lastly, the pricing for the 64GB base model in this case uh, for the iPad mini is going to be $649. Next in the Apple lineup is the Apple Watch Series 7. Now there hasn't been a huge, huge uh, change from uh, the previous design, but there are a few important key features that have been updated and let's talk about them right now. So the first things first is that this Apple Watch Series 7 now includes a 20% larger retina display with rounded edges and a wraparound effect uh, for the display. This display is now up to 70% brighter and includes larger buttons and a full keyboard on the face. Now in terms of technical specs, there has been an update to the durability of the, uh, of the Apple Watch Series 7, which now includes uh, IP6X dust resistance as well as from last year, the WR50 water resistance as well. Overall, Apple focused on the health and fitness features, including uh, apps like fall detection, ECG, and blood O2 apps. Now, unfortunately, Apple didn't release pricing or availability dates for the, uh, for the Apple Watch Series 7, so that's something that we're gonna have to look forward to, um, and hopefully we'll uh, see an announcement made from Apple uh, in the coming weeks or coming months. All right, now for the flagship products. First, let's talk about the all-new iPhone 13. The iPhone 13 has the same flat edge design from the iPhone 12 with the same ceramic shield for the front glass, but now features the Super Retina XDR display. However, on the front screen, the one thing that you will notice and the one thing that everybody knows right away is a smaller notch, about 20% smaller, and that's due to some of the advancements in the underlying technology that we have uh, under that notch. 
the iPhone 13 will use the all new A15 Bionic chipset just like the iPad mini. Uh, it will now have a diagonal dual camera layout on the back with a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens and a 12, a 12 megapixel wide lens on the back as well as a 12 megapixel true depth camera on the front. Apple introduced a new cinematic mode feature which allows for cinema quality video capture using AI driven focus features. The iPhone 13 also has redesigned internals which allow for a larger battery which lasts now from 1.5 to 2.5 hours longer than the equivalent device on the iPhone 12 lineup. Last but not least, the iPhone 13 starts at $799 whereas the iPhone 13 mini starts at $699. These both include a, an updated storage capacity now of 128 gigabytes rather than the 64 that we saw last year. The last device that Apple announced in their Apple event was the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. Now, the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max include all the features from the iPhone 13 like a Super Retina XDR display, the all new A15 chipset, cinematic mode and an increased battery life. It also includes a surgical grade stainless steel bands instead of aluminum that we find on the iPhone 13. And it includes ProMotion which allows for up to 120Hz refresh rate screen that can adjust depending on what you're doing on the iPhone. The key differentiator though is the camera and in addition to the two 12 megapixel wide and ultra wide cameras, the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max include a 77mm telephoto camera. Now pricing for these we have the iPhone 13 Pro starting at $999 as well as the 13 Pro Max starting at $1,099. Both of these start at 128GB base model just like the iPhone 13. And that's it for today's video. If you liked the video, hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. Like I said, I will be covering more Apple content and making videos about each of these products a little bit more in depth. So definitely stay tuned to check out those videos. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.